Sound check. 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 Nothing. Check. I can give it directly on my phone on this laptop. So welcome to Tushita, welcome, well, our introductory course, of course. Welcome back from downtown. I hope you enjoyed His Holiness this morning. Not too frozen, was okay? Yeah, well, wonderful. And welcome online, everybody. So today is a big day. Uh, it's Shutra Duchin, yeah, it's a full moon day. So the, the 15th day of the Days of Miracles, yeah. Uh, so this morning uh, we enjoyed His Holiness uh, down at the temple, if you missed it because of your time zone, because we also have many people online. Uh, then it's, uh, yeah, it was streamed so you can uh, see the recordings. And then sometimes when we are finishing off already a holiday, in America, they're just starting, yeah, so then people watch the recordings, and it's all in the mind, isn't it? Uh, so then they can enjoy. Um, so today, our very, very special guest um, is Sirkan Sencha Prampache. Yeah, um, so I think for the introductory course, people, uh, maybe the Venerable Wongdu has talked about Rinpoche already. Yeah, Rinpoche was very high practitioner in his last life. Um, yeah, you can read up on that. And in this life, Rinpoche was born in Spiti Valley here in India. Yeah, and then went to Dripung, I believe. Yeah, and then uh, studied also at Institute of Buddhist Dialectics. And we are very, very happy to have Rinpoche here at Tushita. Yeah, Rinpoche is so kind, accepting our request again and again, and often we have Rinpoche for these big days here. Yeah, thank you so much. And Rinpoche chose a very juicy topic between, Raisa, where are you? Between delusions and miracles. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, so thank you so much for being here. And if you could please turn your mobiles off. Yeah, if uh, you're just coming from outside, so otherwise it's gonna interfere with our sound system. And uh, Rinpoche usually uh, is very, very capable to speak in English, but sometimes Rinpoche likes to rely on a translator for the more difficult points and finer points. So we have Geshe Lexog very kindly translating again, and we have a translation into Vietnamese from Miss Hai. Thank you so much for being here. Wonderful, thank you so much and enjoy.
So we'll um, <clears throat> offer a short mandala on page 240. Page 240 in the prayer book. Okay. Did you all understand what we just said? <laughs> So I guess most of you, you all uh, had an opportunity uh, to attend His Holiness the Lila Lama's teaching this morning. So there uh, he has uh, uh, bestowed uh, us this uh, beautiful mind, very inspiring mind, which is uh, the most precious mind, which is called Bodhicitta. So he explained about this, and then he just gave us the uh, lineage of this. So uh, what we just said, this is a, a reminder, so that it's taking a refuge into Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, and especially Dharma, uh, taking these refuge uh, it is <clears throat> uh, seeing the fully benefit uh, in the in the Buddha and in the Sangha uh, that uh, they have the quality that we what really need is the cessation. Uh, cessation is, we can say, when, when we have a headache, and especially migraine, migraine, sirva, mercury, migraine, and then <clears throat> the person who is really annoyed by this, uh, 
disease, sickness. And then ultimately, <clears throat> when he has this kind of a disgust or you wanted to get away from this uh, sickness, then ultimately he wants to see a doctor. Not because the doctor is very important. Because the doctor knows how to <clears throat> get rid of this sickness. So, actually what we are really taking a refuge when this morning when His Holiness gave us the wow or uh, the bodhicitta, it's, I think we really need to see that mind, the bodhicitta, the compassion, that without the compassion, we need to see that our life without compassion in this worldly world we might enjoy in the pleasure of the samsara but somehow there is something underneath it it's more like uh, we say uh, this happiness of the samsara is like for temporary. So for that reason, now we are actually in the Tushita here, and uh, this morning when we received a teaching from His Holiness, actually we are going there uh, to uh, look for and uh, to achieve or to generate, uh, to, to extend our happiness, or we are looking for ultimate happiness. And then, <clears throat> and then what you just learned from His Holiness, and this place is a great to discuss and to share. And you have like uh, uh, Gishila and uh, other um, yeah, masters uh, coming here <clears throat> uh, to answer your uh, uh, question. And then uh, why we talk about bodhicitta, why we talk about great compassion, even we uh, have lots of problem uh, ourselves, lots of, we have within ourselves lots of problem, we cannot answer that, but somehow we make a very strong motivation uh, to, um, to help others. Sometimes, it's really funny. Uh, but His Holiness this morning confirmed and guaranteed that uh, from through the young age that he's practicing uh, compassion and bodhicitta, emptiness. That actually really helped him to s stay him very peacefully, very strong, deep inside, and then how this is how he explained he got inner peace. <clears throat> so this morning, uh, there was so many to take away from uh, His Holiness teaching. So I hope uh, you didn't come empty-handed. Um, so, the, about the uh, motivation, and especially <clears throat> uh, because actually today I don't need to actually uh, explain a lot because you already got a very profound, precious teaching from His Holiness. So the thing is cultivate and meditate and uh, uh, to analyze. But now I'm holding this opportunity uh, to uh, reflect what His Holiness shared and I wanted to learn myself and then it's a very good time, time if I <clears throat> stay home, 
uh, I might not study. Uh, I might not uh, <coughs> uh, meditate. But now uh, it's a uh, teamwork. So we are all here together and to uh, uh, this using this uh, special place, Tushita, and uh, to discover, so to discuss about uh, what His Holiness said this morning. And plus, today is a very special day, special calendar. Uh, uh, days of miracle. This is how you translate? Days of miracle. Do you believe in miracle? Right? Little bit. Little bit. Me too. Little bit. <laughs> if I fly, then you go. But if I didn't fly or something, is something in common, then there's no kind of miracle. But it's really funny. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> one time my teacher was giving a teaching, and then he said, uh, with the, the strong uh, conviction and, uh, and, and also uh, concentration and uh, ethical contacts, uh, keeping it very protecting to your ethical contacts. He feels that in this life he can gain some uh, special powers. Once you have special powers, and then you show this to others, then some people might say, miracle. But my teacher that day, he, when he said it, and then he cried a little bit at the same time. And he said, before he has a strong motivation to, uh, to uh, have all these great qualities, magics, powers, so that uh, to tame others. And then, like this day, today, like uh, almost now, 2,600 years ago, uh, Buddha showed some power, and then uh, some of uh, the, the non-Buddhist who is always may, uh, bothering uh, Buddha. So today is the day, Buddha said, today is the day that we meet and then uh, let's uh, deal with the unfinished business. <laughs> so today is the day he showed uh, them uh, the powers, which is that uh, he become uh, undefeated. And then uh, they got so admired, and then they uh, came to uh, learn from Buddha. So when he, uh, my teacher was saying, all these sort of powers and taming others with these skills to tame other, and then he cried, and then all the uh, my classmates just was like, felt a little bit nervous, and then why he's crying, and then uh, a little later, then he said, <clears throat> "Now these days, due to the kindness of His Holiness Dalai Lama." I always pray that may I get all the powers and all these miracles after I have a strong understanding, deep understanding of bodhicitta and a strong compassion. Otherwise, without compassion, without love, very genuinely love, uh, affection to, uh, towards other, if you get power, 100%, I'm sure that I'm going to misused, misused these powers. And we can see if we have a weld and a frame, we do kind of use these in a wrong way to gain money, more power, to uh, compete with others. Also having the, all this power without her, when you become strong, that means strong, I mean, who has a compassion 
and become so uh, transparent to others, then it, it, be, it will become very uh, harmful for others and yourself. So then, uh, from that day on, that left uh, uh, this kind of uh, advice. I don't know whether my teacher has a motivation to say this to us or not. It just came out uncontrolled. And somehow this really still I have this you know, feeling with me. Quite refreshing. So <clears throat> we uh, and then if you look at the story, uh, actually, when uh, yesterday I did a homework because today I need to say something about today's special day. Then. Uh, I am not a good student, and then, uh, nor I am a good teacher. So uh, I need to do homework just like a, a few hours before. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I I checked on a YouTube <laughs> what to say on this. So I found so many materials as normally we didn't get that. And then a few uh, uh, clips when I uh, looked, uh, mostly same thing. And it's talking about Buddha flight, and then other people were jealous, and all the competitor was thinking that's just like a, uh, a tr just an ordinary trick. And then Buddha showed it, and then it it kind of for me it felt like a. <clears throat> Uh, with respect to Buddha, I felt not that catchy. And actually, that is my fault. I cannot connect to it very well. But then I felt like, okay, forward, 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 and then same, forward, 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 and then it's end. <laughs> and then one point there, I think it's the key, the key of this uh, uh, whole story. Uh, when Buddha showed these miracles, uh, Buddha just left with so many teachings there. First, uh, Buddha will uh, let others win, and then he will show uh, that I can be same like you, but a little bit better. That means, like, for an example, there is a <clears throat> related to this when uh, Buddha uh, was, uh, because he is omniscient, so he uh, realized uh, that one great master, he needed to uh, teach him the, the, the essence of the Buddha's teaching. So he really wanted to teach that person so that. Uh, what he did is uh, that person showed like lots of powers. And then Buddha also showed the same power. And then he came to the, uh, showed the, he manifested into kind of a deity. And then also Buddha showed like the same thing. And then there are like the students go like, this is same, same, it's really confusing. And the person who really was competing with the Buddha because it's like a totally like a, uh, reflection in the mirror. It's very same. And then that time he asked the question, no, we are same, same. What's the difference? And then Buddha said, I do have one special thing. That's the Bodhicitta. You are doing this of the cherishing yourself. I'm doing it for cherishing others. So then he gave whole teaching. That's why when if you look into, especially in here, you can see lots of like uh, deities, 
in manifest Buddha manifesting in uh, special form. This is uh, two actually uh, uh, to actually tame uh, people who has a special pride. That pride, not good pride. Um, <laughs> pride, arrogant, arrogant. So, in order to tell this is not very healthy for yourself, so he give a very beautiful teaching. So, so I what I will I would take a bit of this uh, whole story of showing miracles and everything. Uh, Flying and uh, going on, just dis dis uh, disappearing into the earth, you know, water transforming into another form. It could be a miracle for us, but the most uh, beautiful miracle is the transforming the mind. That's what we need. When you see some kind of a transformation, like if there could be one day saying, I have a strong, very uh, uh, strong issue of short temper. Now, I'm feeling, I feel much stronger. Now I'm not, I can go with the same people who really can be uh, causing me lots of problem, but Maybe they become more aggressive, but I can deal with them very easily. That could be a miracle. That's like a, we can use it. But how long are we going to fly? Even you, we get this power. Maybe we can make lots of money out of that. But it, it will be just like a, watching a Avengers movie. Just like what, then you say, wow, that's incredible, that's great. Then there's nothing to gain something from there. But the most powerful, what leaves the Buddha's teaching and some great masters, they really wanted to give us the teaching that we can transform our mind, which day-to-day -day life causes lots of problems disturbing mind. That uh, we could say a miracle, for sure. Do you agree? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, this morning, when his solemnness uh, said Buddhism gives us uh, something unique teachings that we can uh, bring inner peace and that's why we need to keep Buddha's teaching uh, very alive and then Tibetans have a responsibility. Did he, did he say something like this? Right, right? <clears throat> that mm, maybe some people might find like you, like there's not much now Tibetans, there are foreign, foreigners, Indians, why his holiness is targeting there, not us. But the reason what he said because it is helpful to many people, so the Tibetan especially have so many kind of uh, institutions, a community that uh, up to now, uh, the Buddhism was preserved very well in Tibet. So now, uh, unless Tibetans cannot get a kind of freedom in Tibet, it is kind of disappearing. 
So it is a very great message that uh, uh, in India, young generation and the, our generation has a responsibility to keep it very safe. Not because Buddhism comes from India only. That will be very like a reason, very weak reason. But the saying, it really benefits very well. And that His Holiness uh, made a, such a great con contribution uh, because His Holiness is the only one who uh, was brave enough to put uh, Buddhism into the uh, four, no, three categories. First two are Buddhist philosophy, Buddhist science, and then Buddhist religion. So the first two, it too can, these two can used by anybody. Whoever, it doesn't require to take a refuge in Buddha Dharma Sangha. These two uh, are the, one of the uh, Many scientists are using this. That's why uh, Buddhism and the scientists can work together. And then uh, the religion. That is more like a, with believing that Buddha's teaching very personal. It's a little bit personal now. So they're saying like, this is the only suitable medicine for me. That's why I wanted to uh, follow the Buddhist path now. So the first two, we don't need to take any refuge in Buddha. You can be a fan of Buddha, not become a totally uh, devoted, like a religious. So uh, that's why uh, I like this <clears throat> uh, the one quotation by, of, from Nagarjuna, the great Indian master. Uh, he's the one of the uh, heroes of the, His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. So in he, one of his uh, texts, he said, um, I'm not going to take a side of the Buddha's teaching. Uh, and I don't... Uh, no hatred or no hatred looking down to the other religions. Whoever gives me the antidote which that uh, the wisdom give me the wisdom that wisdom is to uh, who can give me the power to reduce the self-grasping because through the self-grasping all the problem has started and whoever gives me this uh, this, whoever gives me this kind of antidote, I'm going to take a refuge. So same thing this morning when he says, you Tibetans have to preserve it well. Same, saying, at the same time, it's like, this is going to benefit a lot, so you hold it and let others enjoy that. So who is going to enjoy? You guys. Like a, <clears throat> like a sunflower, a flower, and a bee comes. <laughs> and I will enjoy the honey. <laughs> Just kidding. <clears throat> um, if we could, like this, Great Master's quotation, if we could follow this kind of understanding, 
this way of looking into. Then we can say, we can take a refuge in your God or Buddha without an attachment. Uh, right now, now in this world, it's kind of becoming like a very fast crazy, so crazy. So sometimes it's hard to tell what's right and wrong. And it's like, sometimes, it's some, sometimes we feel like better to say nothing. And without saying nothing, then you feel so pain inside. So we have to do something. So at this kind of a situation, it is where you should be not biased, honest. So what is the definition of being honest, not biased? I think this is what I just quoted. If you can apply this way of thinking into any kind of situation, you take this way of in your family, in a relation, anywhere, this could be the antidote. This could be like a way to start. Mm. This one, this one. Gumbuludu, Sunday. This one. The Kosoko, you know, yeah. In your pocket, you can't do it. This one, this one. I'm checking with the venerable because <coughs> when I speak, uh, I've deep inside, I feel confident to speak in English. But then, Sometimes what happens, not sometimes, mostly, most of the time it happens, I am feeling like I'm speaking very well. But then, <laughs> audience just go like, what is he trying to say? <laughs> so I got carried away. <laughs> so yeah, you all have a, a responsibility uh, to uh, pull this, uh, uh, I don't know, emergency, uh, <laughs> red thing, <laughs> to stop me. <laughs> okay. Mm. This is it. Uh, now His Holiness uh, this morning said, <clears throat> Only praying will not uh, take away our suffering. Uh, and then he said, right after that, he said, uh, We need to recognize what is really making us unhappy. If, if somebody whom you are praying to is making us suffering, then you pray, take away this, don't do this. Then there is a full power from above to stop that. But because the, the suffering that we have, especially, not physically, in the mentally that what we are really disturbed that it is coming through our attachment and then aversion. So these two comes from mistaken mind. Confused mind. Chadangi, 
So the in general anger and attachment they come they're based on confusion, like a mistaken kind of mind. But especially if we take attachment, then attachment to an object, how does it arise? It arises because we see the object as attractive from the side of the object. And then where does that that kind of attractive, that, that view of it, seeing something as attractive, that arises from sort of grasping at a self. It's related to grasping at I, a self. And then that kind of grasping at a self, it's also by the power of that, that when we see something as attractive, it looks like the thing is attractive from the side of the object. It's not just our perspective, it's from the, the object, from its side is attractive. And then we become kind of fascinated with the object, and then we become like obsessed with it. Similar to like the way a moth, a moth looks at a, a candle flame. The moth sees the candle flame as very attractive, something desirable, and then it, why does it jump into the flame and burn? Because it sees the flame as very attractive, and then it becomes obsessed with it, and then it jumps into the flame, and then burns. So mm -hmm. we're like that. Poor moth. One time accident, finish. <laughs> but for us, we get lots of uh, lifelines, lots of opportunity to, to learn from mistake. So now, now it's really the, the, the right time to recognize uh, before you jump and make any decision. You need to step step a little bit back and then look into the the truth, reality. So that's why we say Buddha's teaching, all the Buddha's teaching will uh, include Silve. Include, include in uh, two truths, ultimate truth and then conventional truth. Unless you don't understand the ultimate truth, you will not know the conventional truth. So that means It is like if you really don't know the reality of the thing, and then you won't, you cannot say how these things are functioning. Uh, so that's a very kind of like a, in a scientific way, very logic is there. That to check. And Buddha, from the beginning of his teaching to the end of the teaching, he would emphasize that our, uh, we have a mind that is mistaken. So it is really necessary to recognize that. Mm. This 
dice tene da ranzu ranzu samalo ani chagdang ke manyong e halom yomar ba chagdang ke manyong ne medu sanbe dang ranzu ranzu chibash dang bi na ani chagdang ni ke na kibu du min du slabi na ani eh chibu di landelia chigi shadan ki du ki min du so, um, probably none of you can say you haven't uh, given rise to attachment and anger. Like we all, we all have experienced having attachment and having anger. But then if we ask ourselves you know, a question, am, am I happy when I have attachment or when I have anger? Then you know, definitely when we give rise to anger, we can say we're not happy, right? But when we have attachment in the mind, then we can say, yeah, sometimes I feel happy. Mm. Do you agree? Is there a day that you just go like, like an anger issue? You're just like, oh, it ruined my day. We say this. But when we are influence of the attachment, then we don't complain. We just go like, why it's not happening like I wish? Why don't you listen to me? It's more really demanding. It's like it should be working as what you wished. So it's more like when attachment is there, you feel like, you can use it well. And then why can you give me a, a reason why attachment lasts longer and then the uh, aversion, anger? And what a scientist say if we uh, angry whole day like continuously, we might die. But like attachment, full mood on, we can kind of stay like this. Why? Pleasure, right? So now, uh, uh, this is very logical because um, when we say meditation is very important, and mostly, we cannot meditate for long time, long period of time. Do you agree? Is there someone who can meditate like one hour continuously? <laughs> if, if, somebody, if somebody can meditate for one hour, not just like closing your eye and falling a little sleep, that doesn't count. <laughs> that I can do. <laughs> it's more that when you are meditating, who meditate for one hour continuously, and then when he kind of uh, awakes from the meditation, that person needs to have uh, more pleasure, more happiness, more joy, than the, uh, during the time of meditation. So, bring uh, one great master, one of my great uh, teacher, my teacher, he said, we do have a similarity, the familiarity, uh, no, uh, familiar, we are familiar with the, uh, uh, the, the meditation or shamatha, a very kind of, it's because we are so familiar with the attachment. So with this strong attachment to someone or something, especially someone, and then it's more like you can work, you can uh, fight, you can do everything for the one person. It's not uh, the only human thing. 
it's also the, the creatures and the animals do that. So, uh, so during the meditation, when you bring so much awareness, that awareness, when, uh, when we bring this awareness of whether your mind is stable or not, the vikarsa, uh, the shishin, vigilant. Introspection. In, introspection. Introspection. The inspector? I don't know. <laughs> Sounds the same. <laughs> the police. <laughs> so with this, you still there's no pleasure. But then when this single-pointed mind starts, and then uh, the great master uh, said, uh, the period of time while you're uh, meditating, then... Uh, the mind and the body feels so light. Uh, I don't know how to translate that. Uh, the bliss of pliancy. No, the bliss of pliancy? Pliancy. Pliancy. Xinjiang. So, it is uh, similarly why I asked you this question, why attachment can last longer. They have like the bliss. So that's why. Like I give you an example. If I request you all to go to, um, I don't know, to Maglot. Not Maglot, let's make it more f uh, um, to Kangra. Okay, that's good. To Kangra, uh, walking. And then, like, you all will look at me and then say like, are you crazy? Then now I give you a reason. I will pay for the, your uh, dinner and there's a very good hotel, you go. Then people who has a wish to eat footy, they will go, right? Then I might say, well, mm, I will give you 1,000 euro, oh, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> now then, like 50% 50 of, 50 of you will go, <laughs> right? Then I will say, I will take care of your rest of life. <laughs> then everyone will leave. So it is a, a sign the more you feel there's more enjoyment, joy then you are going to buy this. This is why attachment lasts very long. But what is wrong with the attachment? Sorry? Yes. Never enough. This is a good one. Uh, there are three. Let's point out three uh, the aspects. Uh -huh. Huh? Qualities or characteristics? The correct, correct, characteristics? Characteristics? Characteristics. Okay, you heard that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so uh, there, there could be three. Like one, you are not getting the what you really want, first. Second one could be never ending third one whether you will you like it or not you have to say goodbye let it go have to let it go three this is complementary for attachment point out in this whole world these three you if somebody has a problem, it's very clear that person has attachment. And now, why this? Because it's not fixed to the reality. 
because tak dinda chezanga dinje ki chumi ji ge namdo chumi ji ge namdo de ani karchi ni kebre islamna karchi ni kebre sena lo chuba jil den kebre es to chuba de kare se to nga chik chuna se ge nga de nga ge ngo de ya go ngoma shin be che ni ani nga ge ngo de sem na rol be namdo go jo ta che nga sinye de pe chu tu ba tempo pe rang ne du su ye de ni shu ji sam no kor che ani di che do ani ko cha da mo sum ke de che so so the yeah, attachment comes from um incorrectly uh, apprehending concepts like incorrectly apprehending concepts is what attachment arises from so these kind of incorrectly apprehending concepts where do they arise from they arise from uh, this kind of way that we hold the self the i incorrectly so and that uh, so the way we hold the i incorrectly is that we exaggerate the self's like independence, it's being self-sustained, it's existing from its own side. So we exaggerate that kind of independent or inherent existence of the self, and then that, that affects kind of the way we, ap- we apprehend other things. Mm. You're translating? Yes. So do you want me to slow down? It's okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, now, the today's topic, uh, which uh, I'm not really used to, to uh, um, bring out a, like a topics very make it very special but then uh, uh, sometimes when you need to do it publicly to announcement you need to make it very nice so uh, i came up with uh, today's <laughs> topic because today is a miracle day and then i thought like why not put uh, how did i put that in in the what's that in between miracles and delusions. What's that? In between miracles. In between. <laughs> in the between. Miracle. Miracle and a delusion. Yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now this part, uh, this part, I uh, kind of uh, uh, covered about a miracle and a delusion. Now, you have to make a decision whether we are in the between or not. (laughs) Uh, Because the miracle what I wanted to describe and the delusion what I just described has to stay in balance. And now we need to see whether uh, we are are in a kind of a between. That's why uh, we should be very thankful that even though we say we are under the sway of the negative emotions, but we are not 24-7 influenced. And there is kind of a, like a, a break time and resting time. That rest is not to just sleep. Like once you can use your timing to look into the the reality, and then uh, you once you can say I'm really deluded. This is the uh, experiencing the Buddha's teaching. When Buddha taught Four Noble Truths, he said, know the suffering. Know the suffering means like, not just to physical pain. Physical pain, Buddha uh, does not need to say that. 
We know that already. So what he really means, to know the suffering means, actually it's wherever we take a rebirth, where how our mind is built up, it's kind of like Chazangaju Dirwa Karsora Koa Koa se Munzindi Chilo Chimuduwa Koa se Ti Maranjuvi and Saja Nevalibi Pungu Diang Sugundi Chibu Maiba and number Sheba Pungu Nagalpa to Sharni the Sutsamalo and Ko Maribi Wongi to Stodi Niji to Sinbati Munzin Chidu Zembe and the Tumis. So when we think of like what is samsara, then sometimes we think it's something outside. But actually it's not something outside. Actually samsara is our own contaminated uh, aggregates. Our aggregates, yeah, contaminated aggregates which we have, um, you know, we've like taken up through rebirth. So how do, and not just, and not just our contaminated form aggregate, our body, but also our contaminated uh, consciousness aggregate and all, our, all of our five aggregates. And the reason they're contaminated is because they're under the power of ignorance. Right? So it's ignorance, which is the root of samsara, which, um, which is, so if we can identify that, how we're under the, you know, our body and mind are the, under the control of ignorance, um, then, we're, then we've identified you know, the suffering that the Buddha's talking about. Especially uh, the the mind, seeing that mind uh, uh, is diluted, and it can be like the suffering. It can be suffering. Um, normally, we don't say that. Normally, we just say most people, most of us, we think. Uh, when we see uh, samsara, then it is more like the physical body. The mind is kind of a, kind of a pure. Uh, it is very necessary in a, uh, Buddhism that we need to see how mind is diluted. And then through this diluted mind, how many things we can uh, pollute, pollute. Uh, for an example, <clears throat> uh, in my room, there, there are so many uh, good things, bad things, not bad things, so not, not that useful things, bad things, I don't mean <laughs> unuseful things. But all this, how did it come in my room? It didn't come in one day, in one hour. I collected. And then sometimes it's surprisingly, I just look at it. Wow, there's so much in there. And I, I could only think, all this didn't come like this. I picked it up. I bought this, and somebody gave it to me, and I kept it. All this, it's through your desire. You, you pick it up, you pick it up, and there. And then you see like, wow, so much thing in, on my table. So similarly, with this kind of a mind, in a Buddhist, we say, this is how we got our body. Little bit difficult to understand. But somehow, when you believe that mind separated, separate from brain, then all this question arises. Once you think it's the same, or it's an action of the brain or something, then it is uh, kind of a easy, a kind of a little lazy. <laughs> because then uh, the question 
not much question is there. You don't want to ask. The more curiosity comes. So, uh, in the Tibetan Buddhism, you might heard about even the uh, uh, physically that uh, brain stop working, working, but still that person can still stay in the meditation. So there are so many things still happening. And then not only the, the uh, Buddhists are saying, but when it was researched, and then we found so many amazing things too, which left kind of a, a kind of a shock or surprising for the scientists. So, and then like for an example, uh, like biologically, like for an example, a twins. Uh, identical, identical twins, but different way of thinking. Emotions are different. One can be very gentle. One can be very aggressive. All these patterns. It's, if you just put that on a biological, you can say it's biological something, something, but it's difficult to live it like this way. And especially person who can change the behavior before very angry, very aggressive, now more peaceful. So all this thing, uh, it could be a, quite a, uh, a, a research investigation for all of us if we wanted to improve our life. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, it is not too important to believe in the past and the future lives. But it's very necessary that to check out whether uh, mind is separate from brain or not. Then if it is the same, and then once when we say the goodbye to the world, then whatever you put effort the purification, rituals, and everything. It's finito. But if it still continues, the patterns, the continuation, the continuum of the uh, uh, mind, the consciousness is there, then person who wanted to have a wish and a person has a lot of uh, ambition uh, or uh, a plan to uh, work more uh, to help others and to improve your life, then it doesn't stop there and it continues. So this, uh, I think, uh, uh, I am sharing this because you uh, all um, uh, just looks like you all have a good education on a Western uh, the knowledge of science and how the brains and everything. And now, plus you need to uh, bring some ideas of a mind. And so then you can make a decision. For this, uh, it is necessary. You really need to know why are you doing this research. If it is for fun, then you once there's no fun, you will stop. You will say, "Okay, done. Now I'm not. I'm going to change." But if it is uh, more to like, a, if you take this very seriously. 
that what I mean serious is it is something to do with your life. And then it really helps you to strengthen your uh, um, the qualities. And then one should really uh, put uh, effort to know uh, what is mind. I'm, I'm thinking I'm saying big, big things, but I don't trust my English. <laughs> okay. Um, but then, Taranshuki, your machigi, and in Ningitzawa, Ningitzawa in some age, some great. Tangaranju, uh, Chadan needy, Chadan needy, Nungru, Tangje, any shine, Mizia get on yella, and Ningia get on go to Chris. Tango Chadan need to do Nungru, Madonna, and my engine ya get on in Slavina, and Tadach dig. Tinning Tongue until ya kawaji yoyan. Ani chigu rangla ya chigu mende wa chung du kongru jie yoyan. Ta di pa chika ju yurung du zanbe rang dong yin nang wa tong yin du zanbe te dang chen du gisang ba. Ma do chigi an te yu yabe zanbe sem la ka nyen du sem de de ma ri te dang chen du gisang ba. Shen dong yin de chen du gisang ba. Rang dong yin de chen du gisang ba. Nyin jong dang nyin ji nyit. Du yung tong zwa. So His Holiness made a very important point this morning um, about generating compassion, uh, which is that you know before we actually generate compassion, we, we need to think carefully about uh, and put effort into reducing anger and attachment. You know, because if we, if we don't actually reduce anger and attachment and just straight away try to increase compassion, then it doesn't really work. You know? So like if we, if, if we um, are kind of fascinated with generating bodhicitta, meditating on emptiness. But before that, we don't really do the work of reducing anger and attachment. Then those other things, it's just kind of like a play, no? It's like you can't really uh, you know, generate insight into wisdom or generate bodhicitta or generate compassion without first reducing you know, those afflictive emotions which, um, which disturb our mind and cause problems you know, in our lives. So before we actually you know, can sincerely generate compassion, then we have to see how attachment and anger uh, harm us and, and apply the, and, and see how they function, right? And then, and then apply the antidotes to anger and attachment and reduce those a little. So for example, like when we have anger, <clears throat> then when we, you know, we see other people suffering, other people are angry at, we see them suffering, then we like it. You know? Or when we see ourselves suffering, then we get upset and may, maybe angry at ourselves, angry about something when we see ourselves suffering. So seeing the fault of that and trying to, then we can, if we can reduce that anger a little bit, then when we see ourselves suffering, then instead we generate a mind that just wants to be free from that suffering. Right? And then when we see others suffering, then we generate a similar wish that they can be free from that suffering. Right, so through reducing anger, then it makes more space than to generate kind of renunciation towards our own suffering and compassion towards the suffering of others. Mm. Okay. Mm. That. Ningjiti. That's just like Ningjiti. 
So, so generally, I think most um, most people, most foreigners, have a, have a good idea of kind of what uh, compassion is. Um, so, like when we think about you know suffering a lot, the problems of suffering a lot, then naturally it gives rise to a desire to be free from that. Uh, not a bit the wrong understanding. The most common in the West, or what uh, mm. it's incomplete. The definition of uh, uh, com- uh, compassion, because one time I tell you a story. Mm. One time when I was studying in Canada, and then my, uh, at that time, uh, remember the uh, in Nepal, the big earthquake came. And then uh, this tragedy, we, when we are discuss, uh, discussing this in a class, and then uh, uh, we are full of, uh, uh, f- we all become very sensitive and we are feeling very sorry for the uh, people who, are, uh, who lost their lives and also people who are really suffering, who survive and then they, they are going through this trauma. And then, uh, uh, my, our teacher uh, said, uh, he, she clapped her hand and said, now guys, wrap it up, and now we need to uh, start our class. And uh, I have lots of uh, personal things going in my life, and I don't have uh, a space to think about other people's suffering. So we can leave this compassion uh, out of the box. That's what she said. And I feel very uncomfortable. Uh, but for from her side, it's kind of a right. Because she cannot deal with that. And there, I have this habit like, even though we cannot deal it, but we cannot say like this. That's what my feeling. And I couldn't say anything because there's no uh, right answer for this. I cannot kind of clarify if she says, what is your uh, solution? But still that really upsets me. Uh, when I was uh, listening to her talk, I could just like, can I say something to her? Can I say something to her? <laughs> but it's something left in my head. But she was a very clever uh, woman, and then after the class she said, when I say something like today's wrapping it up and everything, you, I saw something on your face. So do you really want to discuss about it? And then we start talking. And it's a really, very really sweet talk. And then uh, uh, I uh, don't support her, but I can understand her. Then I said, well, we, I, I'm born in a family. We, we say when we see some suffering, even though we cannot help, but I, we have a seed, like imprint, saying like, wish they don't get this kind of suffering. We make this prayer. But instead of that, you just conclude something like very kind of arrogantly. And then she laughed. I love you, she said. I respect you. But I couldn't say more than anything. This is what uh, our conversation stopped. But the answer I got due to her kindness, because she made this kind of comment, and then I was looking for an answer. And then after maybe three, four years later, His Holiness Dalai Lama, when he gave a teaching uh, in Dharamsala, he said, compassion is not a question. Compassion should be an answer. If you don't have the antidote for the suffering, then you think about the suffering, 
that's torturing. That's not a uh, compassion. But when you feel like I can apply this antidote to my suffering, not the cause of the suffering, and then you feel relieved, and then you feel, wish I can give this kind of a teaching guidance to others. Then this is the real compassion. So that really helped me. So that means, what is the antidote? So there you go. So mostly, when we search for Dharma, which is the true refuge, the main refuge, out from three jewels, we don't know how to find it because we don't have a motivation of, I am a patient. I do have a, this sickness. I do have this disease. I do have this unwanted feeling. Unless you don't have this, then you, even you are researching about medicine. That medicine is, you are not actually looking for a medicine for you. It's, you are just researching about the medicine. When you feel that I really need to apply this to my own experience, my uh, uh, use to reduce this pain or suffering, then with this kind of motivation, you listen to Dharma, you check out for Dharma. Then we can say uh, Dharma is a medicine. So that's uh, the same logic reason when uh, this morning when we mostly we uh, have a kind of a generate the bodhicitta we can say officially we are bodhisattvas no, the officially on the letter letter pad of his holiness <laughs> we can say but still we are the bodhisattvas who really wanted to understand what is the antidote. So I'm still kind of researching. I sometimes get it, but sometimes I don't get it. It's a, uh, not crystal clear yet, but I could feel like this is the one, this is the one. So uh, for you all, because we are now uh, the Dharma brothers and sisters, and uh, you also try to uh, look for the antidote. Remember uh, the life story of Buddha? When uh, he's trying to look for the truth, truth of the suffering, truth of the nature, truth of whatever, then he put lots of effort. And then after six years, then he said, now I found it. And then he said very, uh, first thing when, uh, when he uh, awake from it's kind of wrong way to say awake from the meditation, but for us it looks like the Buddha came out from the meditation. And then he said, um, I, I found the nectar, I found the medicine, but it is uh, it's so profound, uh, so that uh, I will keep in silence I will not teach it now, and I wanted to continuously meditate. That's what he said. That's what I found this is a good uh, teaser. <laughs> <laughs> so the teaser means there should be a trailer, and then there's a full the, uh, the uh, movie. So now, first of all, uh, we need to uh, need to research what did Buddha really found. 
So then he starts with the Four Noble Truths. And then, especially, two truths. And then he said, up to now, I, I was deluded. Now I'm no more deluded. So now I'm free from, not from only the suffering, but I'm free, free from the, uh, uh, the uh, obscuration to the knowledge. She did. So now I can benefit all the sentient beings. That's what he said proudly. And then this morning his holiness said, it really helped me. I'm still meditating on this. It really helped me very, very much. And his holiness almost now, uh, uh, now I think six, seven years ago, he claimed, he claimed, he's like a super humble spiritual leader I ever met. But he claimed almost six, seven years ago, he said, no more abortion coming up. No more attachment coming up. He said that. And this morning also he claimed. So, mm, so we should, I, I, I always think thankful for my masters to giving me the, all this guidance uh, and then also His Holiness appearing in ordinary form and giving all these wonderful teachings and then uh, uh, this behind a uh, great master uh, who uh, kind of uh, recognize, make a very special day, this today, uh, the uh, miracles day of the, the Buddha's curse, or miracle day? Uh, day? Day of miracles. Day, day of miracles. I don't know where to put off and this, this very, the articles or this very uh, proposition in English, very confusing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, day of miracle uh, was kind of especially uh, made by, made so recognized by celebrated, celebrated uh, okay. by Lama Tsongkhapa. Uh, and it, in his uh, text, in the Lamrim Chemo part of stages, he said, in order, in order to uh, bring the realization, and we have to see the depth of the kindness of you, your ordinary guru. <coughs> Unless you cannot see this, you can know many things. You can be, become a kind of a learned one. Uh, like you give a speech and uh, make a, uh, write lots of books and become a very uh, uh, viral, a good viral, yeah, on the internet. But when it comes down to the realization, if you cannot appreciate the day one how the guru, the, the ordinary guru has pushed you from there to here, then you won't get any realizations. So he said, uh, the guru is the principal Lamgit Sawa Shinyatinzu. How do you translate? Root, the root of all good qualities? Oh, the root of the, uh, all the good qualities is devotion to the guru. Right. right. Uh. So I feel so fortunate because uh, up to now, because His Holiness, for like a, almost ten, 10 years ago, His Holiness does not claim he has a bodhicitta, he does have the uh, realization on emptiness, and then he will never say, 
or I have overcome this uh, uh, the uh, the three poisonous uh, minds. But now he claimed, I feel so fortunate. I feel like a very alive example in front of you. So I'm I'm saying this because now His Holiness Dalai Lama is getting quite aged. So there will be one day in this world that we won't, we might not have an opportunity uh, to study and uh, listen directly from him anymore. So I'm giving you kind of a clue that we need to invest our uh, time to, to know him better. And I'm not saying because I follow His Holiness' advice, I'm a huge uh, devotee of His Holiness. I'm not saying this. This could be attachment to His Holiness. I'm saying this because there is so much to learn from out from there. So that's what I'm saying. So use uh, the time uh, to uh, learn and study from His Holiness that uh, uh, which will uh, we, because we, we wanted everything very instantly because now the world is going so fast sometimes too fast, isn't it? It's too fast so, but st sometimes we want it too fast and when it's too fast and then we complain <laughs> so now, <laughs> so we want to uh, put some time to think. And then still, especially if you can invest uh, your time to uh, research and uh, investigate, uh, like His Holiness guidance this morning, of course, His Holiness said very clearly, m after months and years later, you will get the result. This is a clue, so please do that. That choose what? Sixteen is what? Uh, four. Four thirty. Four thirty. Uh, okay. Mm, it's until five, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Or longer, I'm sure. Huh? Or longer. Or longer? Oh. <laughs> oh I'm sorry. Okay. So. Um, maybe I will take a, a few questions, and uh, before the question and answer session, uh, the question and answer, I would like to thank all of you uh, for your attention, uh, giving yourself a time uh, to how to fix a problem and to recognize what is the, the, the leakage, where does the leakage is coming from. And, uh, uh, and then whether you like the solution uh, or methods, but it is really necessary to recognize where does the, all the problem comes. So I thank you all uh, for paying the attention to do that because we talk about world peace. And then you don't want to fix your problem and you want other one to fix their problem. That's a little bit uh, too much, right? So others, they will fix the problem or not, leave this to others. But for us, we really need to fix our problem. So that's why uh, I'm, I'm so uh, uh, thankful for you all coming here and uh, doing this because now um, 
if we uh, we could uh, we could say that I uh, we have some faith in humanity. This is you all, and we want more like people like you. So thank you, and thank you to Shida for this uh, uh, special opportunity and giving me this uh, uh, precious time. And today <clears throat> is a very, very special day, uh, Buddha's day. And we believe today is the day when if we do something uh, uh, positive, uh, gain, uh, accumulate merit, it multiplies uh, how many? A hundred million? <laughs> <laughs> hundred million. So how we can become billionaire? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I thank you for that. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, so Tushita is organizing all this uh, beautiful event with lots of great masters. Uh, so it's a very, a very uh, lucky to have this place. I just, especially His Holiness gives teaching and here we can discuss. So that's amazing. Uh, and then uh, this is all coming from uh, not other than uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama's uh, prayer and uh, 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 plan, and then also this uh, made uh, he, uh, our late uh, Lama Sabarabhaji, uh, who we recently uh, lost him, but uh, mentally it's still there, physically uh, uh, to show us the impermanence uh, he vanished. And now soon we will uh, he will come in a uh, uh, very externally, extraordinary uh, form. And uh, so we all should pray these great masters. We need many of them to bring and to work with, to guide us. So make, please make a, a prayer with me. And then... Uh, uh, the more uh, these great beings come, and uh, we shouldn't fail them. Uh, we, we should, uh, like especially these messages to the uh, Rebuche student, uh, who are working very hard, very, uh, having a very feel, uh, strong connection, and then, we request Lama to come again to guide us. And then if we don't kind of uh, study what he has given us a homework, and then request him to come back, it's kind of like a, a little bit strange because one time His Holiness said, when we do ritual pujas, we invite uh, great beings like Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas. And then we, uh, when we do the seven, uh, what's that, seven limb, seven limb prayer. prayers, and then there is a saying, we request to give a teaching. <laughs> so then his son has always make a joke on that. He says, well, I have given, I have taught a lot. So why are you requesting uh, us more to teach? So then what will you say? And then we will just, uh, without an answer, we have to open our um, mouth. So that's what his son has said many times. So that's actually very true. So we need to do our homework. And then you can look at the, maybe the reincarnation of Rinpoche and say, I practice this and that. And then, even the recognition will recognize you or not, but it's uh, you just pass your test. So this is uh, uh, we, we, this is what we need. So please do it. 
And then uh, dedication. Uh, as we have accumulated billions and billions of uh, merit today, individually me and all multiply, so lots and lots. So this uh, merit, we uh, still we have, uh, have we have to use this merit for a greater purpose. So then we reserve it. Uh, the, we reserve it for the uh, until we get a fully enlightenment uh, out of a samsara. May we can use this wisely. So that uh, is uh, two different things of uh, different differences between uh, what is the difference between prayer and dedication. Dedication is something that you have already did something, uh, the merit that you, how you are going to use this in the future and making a prayer. That's the dedication. And the prayer is very large, very uh, broad. You can say, uh, may you become fully enlightened very soon. That's also prayer. That uh, we can do it. But the dedication is something a little more than that. Okay, so thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, once again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so uh, I will take uh, maybe two questions because time is limited. Okay, one and two. Okay. Thank you so much for today. Um, so my question is about attachment. You talked a lot about attachment, and um, I know my mind has a lot of attachments. So well, how do I know what to let go of first, or how to pri prioritize? I can't let go of everything, I think. I don't know, maybe it's mm -hmm. wrong thinking. Mm -hmm. But how do I prioritize what do I let go of first? Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, let go is a little bit strong. Uh, I kind I didn't uh, say we should let everything go. Uh, the attachment, how it holds and clings. Uh, and uh, without the attachment, the question is, there is uh, another way to hold. These are the two things. How attachment holds, and there are something else when you see the reality. And then you come back and say, this is I am going to hold. So it is a different way of holding, not letting go. So unless you don't see mistake in this attachment, you don't know what to let go. And you don't know how to hold. So first, we have to learn from our mistake, which already we have. We have to say, the up to now, I'm holding like this, this gives me a pain. Now I'm going to hold how the reality it is. I look into reality and this is how it is. So this is how I'm going to hold. This is a, another different way of holding. So if I explain a little bit more on this. So uh, first, when we see something uh, inherently existent, so true. This is the, our kind of first mistake that we will hold into. And then the mantra, <laughs> mantra of the pain out from this is like, I thought he was so good. I thought that person is so good, but turns out so bad. 
But then you see these two faces. But actually this is one person. And you should really know this kind, this kind of person whom you rely can have these two different ways of thinking. But then for you, it, it becomes like two separate person. So uh, that's why uh, once you come to know the reality, which is the, there's nothing I can grasp uh, the, from its own, so solitarily there, that really doesn't mean there's nothing there. Now I'm, I, it's like more I have taken the parts away and now I'm going to fix it. Now the fixing is more interesting. So now I have taken the part of this and there's nothing to be grasped like this. But what is the takeaway from there's nothing solitarily uh, uh, truly uh, existence from uh, its own, that proves, uh, simultaneously it proves that it's dependent. It's dependent on something. And now, if you, could to, if you could accept the reality, which is two things. One, it does not exist by its own, and at the same time you think, now, because it does not exist by its own, it proves that it's dependent on something. So then you will start welcoming all other things that, how it is, it is. It is a little bit confusing. Little bit, I just said little bit. <laughs> So, like, uh, uh, that's why uh, when you uh, read the Heart Sutra, in there it talks about uh, where is this inherent I? Right, inherent I. And then in the whole section, this uh, dialogue between two Bodhisattva, one, one Bodhisattva and one Ahad, when they are making kind of a dialogue. It proves there is no uh, solitarily, uh, inherently I. And then at the end, in, in between it says, form is emptiness. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. So this is the fixing part. Saying, if you stay like everything is emptiness, then it's more like, everything letting go. But that conversation didn't stop there. It start, It kind of continued, saying, once you see the emptiness very well, then you can see the how things function very well. And then uh, this great uh, being behind me, this Lama Tsongkhapa statue. So this great guy praised Buddha Shakyamuni you have lots of qualities, but I am going to, I'm so admired, so admired of all of your qualities, but one unique thing, one most unique thing that I found in you is right after you taught emptiness, you taught on a dependent origination. That's so powerful. And then, after this, through the emptiness, and then you know all this conventional truth, then you can enjoy your life without any leaving any stains. And you can forgive easily, and you can uh, connect with other people very easily. And um, there are so many more things. You name it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a bit tough uh, topic, 
but uh, don't give up on it. <laughs> uh, because this is the, uh, the, the, the true profound of, profound of the Buddha's teaching. And we, we don't need to afraid. You don't need to afraid people who may be not Buddhist. You don't need to afraid. Once giving, uh, doing this kind of investigation, you might feel like in order to investigate that, should I become a Buddhist? No, Nate. That, that way of researching category goes into the uh, Buddhist philosophy, not the religion. If you have a problem, you go to see His Holiness. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for giving your insights. They were really, really useful. So I have a very practical question. So I'm very new to learning Buddhist philosophy. I've been doing some meditations for a few months. So practically what's happening, impact of meditation stays with me for five to seven hours. Mm -hmm. But then the day approaches, external factors starts overpowering your emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, things don't go your way. Then your afflicted emotions takes you over. Mm -hmm. Even if you are aware inside, this is an afflicted emotion, but still, you are unable to get out of that mode of worry, anxiety, and next of your actions go in that direction automatically. Mm -hmm. So is there any practical way to overpower these emotions by adding some other routines in the life over and above morning meditation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. You, you, you are in, uh, not just studying but you are applying these antidotes. Uh, that's very good. Good to hear. Uh, there is a, for you, I think, the, uh, to, uh, to deepen your uh, meditation, I think uh, you need to study the Karsa, uh, Karsa Dila. Mm. Eight points, Karsa. Eight point mind training? No, Dimare. Eight point mind training, what? Lojon Sigema. Lojon Sigema, Mare. Oh, sorry. No. Mare, Mare, Lojon Timare. Sem Nebe Tabgu. Sem Nebe Tabgu. Tabgu. Tab method. Go. Alay Tabgu. Yeah, the nine stages of mental abiding. Uh huh. Something like that. That. Uh, this will be very beneficial. So there will be like a first stage, second stage, third stage, and then you can see in which category what you, you just described. It is in between maybe second and third. You kind of a, kind of a, I'm saying kind of, kind of a, uh, covered the first one. So, uh, now it goes back to the uh, place where we started about joy. While doing meditation, it's more like you are talking with other people and enjoying Instagram, and then you just go like, oh, I need to go back to my cushion. Do you feel this, this one? Yeah. And if you've said like, you are uh, called by your best friend for a, like a party and then you really wanted to do a practice and then you are difficult to choose between but then you will just say I need to stay and meditate this one so don't tell this to your friends <laughs> <laughs> So this thing, these are the things. So in order to have this, uh, you need to see while sitting and making your mind stronger and stronger, you need to see when you go out that how your mind has become stronger. And then once you see I am not strong enough, but then I need to be, it's more like a game, isn't it? You play very well, and then it, there you feel like, in here, 
I get a lot of a problem. And then you need to kind of a, you like to have a more practice. You like to. But if you don't feel like you are, you have some opponent or some kind of a, something to face, and then you feel not challenged. And then you feel like, okay, I did, I done with my practice now today. Actually, you are not done with your practice. You just covered up something which you are not applying. But then when you feel you talk and then aversion start coming like, oh. Two weeks, no problem. Now this come. And then you wanted to look at your mind. And then you will know what parts of the mind that is missing in you. So go through this. Uh, Karsa? Uh, the nine mental abidings. Nine, or the nine stages of mental so nine stages abiding, you are doing. something like that. Yeah. It's a method for generating uh, mm. single-pointed concentration, mm. shamatha. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. This explanation. So to maybe Lexola can give some kind of a, uh, the points of this tabu uh, afterwards. Afterwards, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Mm. <laughs> okay, thank you. Good. So thank you very much. So, perfect time. Oh, two minutes left. So just time. <laughs> time for a mandala offering. Offering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on page uh, 243, there's a mandala if you, offering if you have the prayer book. Oh, sahaji bhoi joy shi me doi for for the backup <laughs> I always need you so <laughs> thank you so much thank you 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 Oh, that's... Oh, that's... Oh,